everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and I finally got the coveted compute stick from Intel. I know a lot of you have been interested in this. I got a lot of uh, emails and comments over the last couple of months about it. So we finally got it. It is here, and we're going to put it through its paces. If you're not familiar with this, this is a full Intel computer on an HDMI stick. So you can pretty much plug it into the side of your TV, hook up a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, and you've got yourself a computer that is actually pretty functional. It's running with an uh, Atom Z3735F. It's a quad-core processor. Uh, this is the Bay Trail generation of chips. So there's a new version of this Atom processor that Intel came out with. Uh, this is the older version of it. So uh, it's still going to perform okay, but not as fast as some of the newer ones will. Uh, two gigabytes of RAM built in, soldered onto the board, so you're not uh, going to be able to upgrade the RAM. Uh, it also has 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage, and I believe that is uh, hardwired to the board also. So you really can't do all that much uh, as far as upgrading is concerned. Now we have to compare this to the Mego pad that I looked at a few months ago because uh, these devices are very, very similar. In fact, everything is almost in the same exact spot. Uh, if you put them side by side, you can look here on this side in particular, the power buttons are in the same place. The, uh, the, cord, uh, the port for the power is in the same place as is the USB port too. So I think this, these are uh, probably coming out of the same contract factory in China because they are very much identical. They're almost the same length. Uh, but you will notice the Intel device is a little bit taller, and the reason is uh, they have better thermal controls on it. There is a fan and heat sink underneath this little grill here uh, that will come on when the device is under load, which the Mego Pad doesn't have. Uh, one of the things we found with the Mego Pad is that it doesn't perform as well as other Atom devices with the same chip. It was like 20 or 30% slower. And I think the reason is, is they probably clocked the processor down because they didn't have a lot of room for uh, dissipating heat. Uh, whereas with this one, they've got the fan and the heat sink, and I think it's a little bit better tuned for that. So we're gonna see some better performance out of here. Uh, so just an overview quickly of the ports. We did look at them a second ago, but uh, you've got a USB 2.0 host port here. So you can plug in uh, things like keyboards and mice and other USB hubs. If you wanna connect more devices, we're gonna be doing that shortly. Uh, you have the power adapter here. This is a standard 2 amp USB power source. It does come with a uh, AC adapter, but you could use a battery if it supports a 2 amp output. So you have some options there for using it. Uh, your power button is on this side. On the other side, you have a micro SD card slot for uh, augmenting its onboard storage. And I believe this uh, will support uh, up to a probably, a, I think, a 64 gig uh, card or better. Uh, because it does support the uh, SDXC standard 3.0. So I think that will give you um, pretty uh, decent storage options. I, I may even be able to go higher than 64 gigs, actually. So uh, it's a pretty up-to-date port. Uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are built in. Uh, it is uh, 802.11n, 2.4 gigahertz only. And I did find that the Wi-Fi was a little slow on here. Maybe it's just uh, interference, or maybe it was a little bit too close to my TV. But uh, overall, it seems like a pretty uh, well-packed uh, little computer. And we're going to boot it up. Now, this is the Windows version. So this is $150. They also make a Linux version, which has less storage and less RAM for about $100. And part of the price of this is the Windows license. So this is a fully version, a fully licensed version of Windows on here. Uh, the Mego Pad, as you recall, did not have that. So there's a little bit of an extra investment uh, on the Mego Pad to get the licensed version of Windows. Now we're going to hook this thing up and see how it works. All right, I've got everything hooked up right now. I just want to explain to you what all this stuff is so you can understand what I'm doing. Uh, this is an HDMI splitter. So I'm taking the HDMI out of the compute sticks. So I don't have it plugged into the side of my monitor. I have it here on my desk. I'm running that out to the splitter. One end is going into the monitor. The other end will go into my TriCaster, the video switching system that I use so we can get a better view of the screen. I also have a USB hub here that has three USB ports as well as Ethernet too because I wanted to do some multimedia demonstrations in a little bit as well. So what I'm gonna do now is hit the power button on the device and you'll see how fast it boots up. It does look like it boots a little bit slower than uh, it might uh, on other uh, Atom-based devices, but I think it's pausing here to let you get into the BIOS if you wish to do so. And we're gonna go into the BIOS towards the end of the review because I know a lot of you are interested to see what is in there. So we'll let this uh, boot up Windows and then we will continue on. I think we'll start probably with a little web demo just to see how uh, all of that works. But as you can see here, we're just waiting for the display to reinitialize and we are up all right, we're going to pop open the desktop here, and we are going to go to Internet Explorer and pop open uh, the New York Times and see how that page loads. Tonight, they're running a video uh, on the front page, too, so we'll get a feel for how that looks. If you're seeing any kind of text distortion, it's just because of how my video system interfaces with the device. So it does look fine on a monitor if you're seeing any weird text on the screen right now. 
Uh, we are going to pop open a story here and just see how it uh, renders a page when we do load that up. And as you can see, it does come up uh, fairly quickly. I will say from kind of just a, uh, you know, a uh, unmeasured kind of just look and feel kind of test, uh, it feels a lot faster than the Mego Pad for sure. And it feels faster than a lot of the other Atom devices that we've looked at, both tablets, desktops, and laptops. And I ran the Octane test on Chrome, which measures uh, the browser's ability to render JavaScript and uh, overall web pages on the device. And the Intel Compute Stick actually performs a lot better than some of the other devices running the same processor. So we got a score of 6,544 across 10 tests. Uh, that compares to 5897 on the Stream 7, which is that 7-inch tablet we've looked at. Uh, the Asus X205 laptop, another device I liked a lot, also running with this Atom chipset, uh, 5519. Uh, the Mego Pad was in like the 45 or 4600 range on that same test. So you get a real feel for uh, just how much faster this is. And uh, it is all due to that fan and heat sink there, allowing the chip to run uh, at its uh, desired uh, processing speed without any uh, thermal issues that we can, at least I haven't found yet. I am going to load up uh, my YouTube page real quick and we'll uh, take a look at an HD video on here too so you can get a feel for that. I, I don't think you're going to get the 4K playback out of here, uh, nor should you because it doesn't support 4K monitors. 1080p I think is about the best you're going to get out of this device. Uh, but I am going to go into uh, theater mode here. I'm going to pop open uh, the uh, 1080p version because a lot of you were wondering if I could pull up the stats for nerds so we can get a feel for uh, whether or not we're dropping any frames here along the way. So I'm going to let this play back. Maybe I'll pause it, uh, go into full screen and uh, play this back as a full screen video and just kind of keep an eye on the stats for nerds thing here and see if we dropped any frames. I ran this a couple of times before I started shooting the video and uh, did not get any drop frames on a 1080p 30 video. So I think you're going to be fine here. And I think too, you'll see a uh, similar performance when you're running Netflix and some other video sites too. So they definitely uh, are doing a lot of things right here. This is a really nicely performing device. Uh, what's interesting is as this video is playing right now, you can't hear it on my mic, but uh, the fan is definitely coming up on here. So it is, uh, this, is, this is a time where things are getting taxed a little bit and it's going to uh, turn the fan on to keep things cool on the device. So that is uh, YouTube. And now what we're going to do is load up Microsoft Word and do some boring word processing on here and see how that performs. All right, we're going to boot up Microsoft Word right now with my favorite template, which is this newsletter template that has a lot of text and a lot of graphics on it so you can get a feel for uh, how it can handle those sorts of things. And, you know, as you scroll through, it does uh, get a little sluggish because there's a lot going on in these pages, and uh, this is a lot for a little processor like this to handle. It's funny because uh, it really does a lot better in multimedia, which you'll see in a minute. Uh, but this kind of work is really uh, going to bog it down a little bit more. It's not unusable by any means. It certainly, as you can see here, uh, you know, it will relatively quickly uh, render the text around the photo as we move things around uh, but it isn't going to be as fast as perhaps a more expensive desktop computer will be. Uh, you can certainly run Photoshop on here. You'll have a you know, very similar experience to what you just saw here. Uh, video editing, forget it. It's really not tuned for that. It could run video editing applications not all that well. Uh, but what it does do really well is video playback, and Kodi runs awesome on here. So let's boot up Kodi and see how everything performs here. It does load very fast on here. And what I like to do for my Blu-ray movies is store them on a network-attached storage device in the basement and what I do is actually take the movies off the disc so I don't recompress them or do anything else I've got these huge 25 to 40 something gigabyte movie files uh, that often choke a lot of these smaller PCs so we're gonna see how uh, it does here and we're gonna load up my Star Trek movie that we like to test out now I am streaming this over Ethernet with, with the adapter we have plugged in uh, but I've been playing around with this all night I have a little uh, statistics display here that I've been running and I haven't seen really any drop frames at all I might get one occasionally if I try to skip a little bit further ahead in the movie, but uh, this is really keeping up very, very well, actually. Uh, none of the CPUs are overtaxed. There's still some memory left to uh, play with as well. So uh, things have really been running really, really nicely on here. Uh, you can plug this into a home theater receiver and get uh, the digital sound. The one thing that won't work are some of the higher end DTS and Dolby Digital uh, codecs, which don't seem to work on a lot of these Intel devices. Uh, so those super high end ones, the lossless ones won't work, but regular DTS, Dolby Digital, uh, those should all work just fine uh, on here. And as you can see, the movie's playing back great, no drop frames. Uh, and I was really impressed with that. The fan will be running on it when it is going, but uh, it's so tiny, you really don't hear it. So I don't think it's going to interrupt any uh, movie playing. The other thing I wanted to show you is uh, some of the uh, live television capabilities. And I have an HD home run, and they've got an awesome 
a little plug-in for Kodi uh, that lets you watch your live television complete with a guide here on your uh, devices. And it's uh, working just, just as well as the Blu-rays do. And these tend to be a little bit more taxing even than the Blu-ray files because uh, this is MPEG-2 video playing back uh, over my cable system versus MPEG-4, which is a little bit uh, something that usually tends to work a little bit better on uh, smaller devices. So uh, able to watch live television with the MPEG-2 format and the Blu-ray MKVs work very well too. So we have a few more things to look at though. And the next thing up is Minecraft. So we're going to check out its gaming performance and see how it does versus the Mego Pad. Now we're seeing excellent performance out of Minecraft here at frame rates in the uh, 25 to 30 frames per second territory, sometimes more. Uh, as it's drawing things in, you'll see a little bit of a fluctuation, but uh, this is much better than the Mego Pad, uh, mostly due to the fact that we have that cooling system on the chip so we can run uh, at a much better frame rate. And this is pretty impressive and pretty playable, especially for a $150 stick that you plug into the side of your TV. So it's pretty good, I have to say. Uh, one thing that I would uh, caution you against, of course, is running any kind of modern game on here. This is certainly not going to be a modern gaming platform, uh, but I do think uh, things like 8 and 16-bit emulators should work okay. I think even like the Sony PlayStation emulators should work well. Uh, as you get into more of the modern consoles, I think we'll start uh, bumping up against the limitations of the processor. If you want to see something on emulation, uh, let me know. I'll do a follow-up video and just leave some comments below and we'll check that out. All right, one last thing to do, and that's to look at a few things in the BIOS that I found interesting. So uh, this is the screen you'll see when you enter the BIOS. It does support secure boot so you can uh, you know do some things to prevent things that you don't want from booting on the device if you so choose you have that option uh, you also have the ability to kind of customize uh, what is displayed to the user when the machine does boot up so for example you could turn off the thing that says press f2 to go into the BIOS setup hitting f2 will still get you there but it just won't give the user the option on the screen so there are some uh, little safeguards you can put on pl in place there uh, if you wish to do so. Uh, this was the most interesting thing to me, which is the power mode. Uh, by default, it's on balanced. I've been running it in performance mode, and they give you a warning when you when you do that because remember, you're only getting uh, two amps of power on five volts going into this thing. So basically, USB tablet voltage uh, is really what it's getting. So if you have USB devices plugged into it like we do right now, uh, they're recommending that you use a powered hub versus one like I'm using here. For some reason, I was able to get all this stuff to work. I'm probably at the maximum that I'm, I'm going to get through that port uh, in performance mode. But if you have things like drives plugged in and other things, you're gonna to wanna to get a USB hub that plugs into the wall so those devices get their power from the hub and not through uh, the Intel compute stick. That is a really important thing to note uh, before you put that into uh, performance mode because the default, again, is balanced. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but if you just have a keyboard and mouse plugged in, uh, you should be fine without having to use a powered hub. You can also disable some of the features on the uh, Intel compute stick, like the SD card and the USB. And you can also choose whether or not the NumLock is going to be on when you turn on the machine. Uh, this is interesting. So it's got a, a ability to select which operating system you want to run. And it's very specific. It's either Windows 8.1 32-bit or Ubuntu LTS 64-bit. And it's telling you when you hit the uh, little help thing here that no other operating systems are supported supported by the BIOS. I might try to test that. I might try to load up uh, Open ELEC or something just to see if it'll allow it to boot, if this is just like a warning versus an actual um, uh, limitation of the system. But uh, this is what it's saying at the moment. Although I'd imagine if I switch it into the Ubuntu mode, I could probably get uh, some other things to run too. So we'll test that out uh, maybe coming up this weekend. Uh, you also have the ability to turn on the UEFI shell if you so choose. You can enable or disable booting off the USB port if you wish. And you can uh, also determine how you want the power state to be when the device is plugged in. So you can have it default so that whenever you plug in the USB cable to its power port, it'll boot up automatically. So if you have this running on like a kiosk or something and you just want it to load up automatically every time it's plugged in, uh, it'll do that uh, when you have always on set. Uh, or you can go to always off and it'll require the person to actually push the button to turn it on. Uh, and then of course you have the boot drive order here too. So a uh, pretty basic BIOS, but some interesting things in there nonetheless. And I have to say, I'm really impressed with this device. This is a nice little computer on a stick. Uh, certainly the most powerful computer on a stick we've looked at. Uh, it performs really, really well, uh, much better than the original Mego Pad. And I say the original Mego Pad because they're already coming out with their response to this device. It looks very similar actually to the compute stick. Uh, so that will be coming out soon from the Mego Pad folks. We'll get that in and take a look at it and see if they've uh, been able to match the performance of this because right now uh, this 
is a better machine, uh, much faster than the Mego Pad, uh, and you can get it from a you know, domestic company here without having to go through uh, AliExpress or something like that. You can buy it at Newegg like I did or Amazon or anywhere else you can buy Intel stuff, and Intel, of course, will uh, back it up as well. So that is the Intel Compute Stick. I'd love to hear uh, what else you'd like to see on it, and uh, as my schedule allows throughout the next uh, week or so, we can do a little bit more with it. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. Thank you.